So we'll go ahead and get started with the briefing. Here's the, uh, the headlines, and I'm going to send these slides to you out afterwards. So if you, uh, if you got the email, then you'll get the, you'll get the slides afterwards. We are expecting uh, scattered thunderstorms with some heavy rain, and we'll begin to see some localized flooding even today and tonight. Similar to what we saw yesterday in Norman and other places, we will see enough heavy rain today to cause some localized flooding over the area with the saturated ground. Of course, it's not going to take much rain at all to cause uh, problems. Tropical Storm Bill is making landfall along the Texas coast uh, this afternoon, and that will continue to move into the, the state of Texas uh, through the day today. Um, as that moves up into the area, beginning as it gets closer to the area on Wednesday, we're going to see, see widespread heavy rain increase over southern and central Oklahoma. And while we can't nail down the exact location of where the axis of the absolute heaviest rain is going to be, uh, wherever that is, it's going to experience potentially life-threatening flash flooding and river flooding. And anytime we're dealing with these tropical systems, we do have some potential for a few brief tornadoes, relatively weak tornadoes on Wednesday and Thursday. That is way down the list of things we're worried about, though. The main concern by far is the uh, flash flooding. This moves out will be drier and warmer as we get into the weekend. Here is the latest forecast track. Uh, this is based on the National Hurricane Center forecast. It was issued at 10 o'clock this morning. Uh, the center of Tropical Storm Bill is uh, making landfall down to the um, uh, down along the Texas coast, as you can see there. Then you can see the forecast positions, 7 p.m. Tuesday, 7 a.m. Wednesday. 7 p.m. Wednesday is when the center of what's left of Tropical Storm Bill at that time will be approaching the Red River down near Marietta and Ardmore. And then we see the system moving off toward the northeast pretty quickly, 7 a.m. Thursday. Uh, it's out um, over southeast Oklahoma. And by 7 a.m. Friday, it's over south central Missouri. Now, this, this track is, um, there's fairly high confidence in this track, but I would watch it very carefully. We are seeing some signs on, in radar and other trends that indicate that maybe uh, this will be shifting a little bit more to the west. This is not set in stone, so right now I'd say fairly high confidence in, in that this will be the track, but I would not be at all surprised to see that 7 a.m. Wednesday, 7 p.m. Wednesday, and 7 a.m. Thursday position shifted further uh, to the west. Some of the models that we look at, a couple of the models, the operational models that we look at all the time, uh, have the center actually west of I-35 uh, late Wednesday night and into early Thursday morning. The exact location of that center and the track is going to make all the difference in the world when it comes to the impacts that we all experience. If you were along and just to the east of that black line, that center track, uh, based on this forecast, that's really where we expect the heaviest rains to fall. On the west edge of that, um, we're going to see a rapid drop off in the rainfall amounts. And I'll show you a, a graphics for that here in just a second. Here is the forecast rainfall from the National Weather Service Weather Prediction Center. This is a national forecast. This kind of gives you an overall view of the where we expect the heaviest rain to occur from today uh, through the day on Thursday. And we can see clearly outlined by the orange and, and reds and, and the brighter colors there, uh, the, the, their forecasts are the current official weather service forecast of the uh, track of Tropical Storm Bill. But again, a slight wef westward shift in this is possible, and that's going to move all of this uh, heavy rainfall further uh, to the uh, west. Here's a zoomed in view of that and zooming in on Texas and Oklahoma. Anywhere you see orange shading on this map indicates over five inches of rain, and where you see the darker shading, there's some speckles of darker shading there. That indicates seven to possibly 10 inches of rain. Again, don't get too focused on the exact precise lines and boundaries. Uh, you might want to allow for a, a county-wide area on either side of this as kind of a fudge factor. Uh, the forecast, is, as I said in a, a second ago, is not set in stone. Um, but this is what we're thinking right now. Let's zoom in just a little bit more on Texoma and uh, our area in, in particular. And again, we see right now we, we're most concerned about the very heaviest rains falling. Um, places like Marietta, Ardmore, uh, uh, Ada, uh, 
Holdenville, McAllister, Colgate, Atoka, Durant, uh, Medill, uh, Tishmingo down in, in those areas. But again, even if you're in the red shaded area, all the way up to Norman, over to Paul's Valley, over to Duncan, down to Warica, that's still three to four inches of rain and uh, and that can move westward. So that line can move westward. So uh, with the saturated ground, it's not going to take much rain at all. We had about two to three inches of rain in parts of Norman, maybe more than that yesterday, and we had extensive street flooding that happened very quickly. So uh, just because you're not in that uh, brightest colored area of the heaviest rainfall doesn't mean that you're out of the woods. Another reason I wanted to show this is there's going to be a very tight gradient of rainfall on the western edge of the track. So for example, it would not be at all surprising to have southeastern parts of the Oklahoma City metro area picking up four plus inches of rain, while northwestern parts of the metro up toward Guthrie and Kingfisher might be lucky to see a half inch to three quarters of an inch. There's going to be a very tight gradient. So even just in the city of Oklahoma City in the metro area, you're going to see a big difference in rainfall from the southeast side to the northwest side. And that's going to hold true all along that western edge. And again, uh, keep in mind that th this is the forecast as it is right now. We will be updating this throughout the day. And don't be at all surprised to see that whole area of heavy rain shifting a little bit further uh, to the west as we go through the day today and tonight. The peak timing for this is really, like I said, we can expect scattered showers and thunderstorms through the day today and into tonight. I think we'll really start to see the, the impacts of uh, what's left of Tropical Storm Bill um, during the day on Wednesday. Uh, as that center of circulation begins to approach a Red River, we'll see these spiral bands that you see with these tropical systems extending way out to the north of it. So we'll actually start to see some of the impacts with this to, uh, during the day. Uh, tomorrow, I think the peak time that we're worried about is really from pretty much all day Wednesday and end early in the day on Thursday. By Thursday night and Friday, this is all gone and it's going to be hot and muggy and, and dry for, for a while. We are also concerned about river flooding with this situation um, and these are current uh, forecast points in our area that are forecast to go at or above flood stage. Um, now keep in mind that these, the river forecasts that you see on here, those orange and red dots are, are points that are going to be in either minor or moderate flooding. That's based on just 18 hours of rainfall. That's, that's based on forecast rainfall from now 18 hours into the future. That doesn't even grab a hold of all the heavy rain that we're expecting with, with the tropical storm. So, um, we could see more river forecast points lighting up here. For one example, we looked at uh, Wichita Falls, uh, the Wichita River there at Wichita Falls. Uh, it is currently forecast to go to minor flooding, but if we were to get two to two and a half inches of rain across that whole basin that feeds into the Wichita River there at Wichita Falls, we could go up into the moderate flooding category. And it's not out of the question that some areas are going to see major flooding. Now, there, uh, there's questions in the chat about uh, uh, Lake Texoma and things like that. I, uh, I don't know exactly what it would take for Lake Texoma to go back over the spillway again, but uh, Lake Texoma is going to get a lot of rain. And just about any scenario that you paint here, um, uh, the te Lake Texoma, the Durant, Medill, Atoka area, that Texoma area down toward Sherman Denison is going to get dumped on with a lot of a lot of heavy rain. So I think that's that's almost a given. So I wouldn't be surprised to see more more uh, uh, river flooding and and lakes having to and lakes going over spillways and things like that. Okay, so that's basically. The briefing, that's all the information I have for you. I will stand by and take any questions if anybody has any at this time.